friends. Today we're working on Vanadium, and as promised, I'm going to keep it light this week. Any stories will be happy stories. Sound good? But first, Vanadium is a transition metal that plays really well with others, and in fact, one of its alloys is the strongest steel known to man, which is why I have assigned her the meaning of strength. Even alone, vanadium is very hard, very strong, and very resistant to corrosion, so the title fits. Having decided that this column would be represented by marsupials, I had to delve into Australian natural history and came up with the wombat as a fitting species for this concept. Not only is the wombat hardy, tough, larger than I ever thought, and adorable, but wombats are also unusually tolerant of multi-species squatters who flee into their burrows for protection from fires and predators. Isn't that just grand? Even if it is accidental heroism. Plus, they poop cubes. So, yeah. But how to achieve a wombat woman? Vanadium was named after Vanadis, which is another name for Freya, the Scandinavian goddess of beauty and love, among other things. It got its name in reference to the fact that vanadium minerals can be so beautiful, and the man who named it was Swedish. Wombats do not lend themselves to a traditional artistic representation of the concept of beauty, so I had to think outside the box and explore options. Please don't get attached to anything you see. Some of the outfits we try on are upsetting. That thing over her shoulder is a wrench, one of many tools which are vanadium alloys and proud of it, and I wasn't afraid to try to give her hair. Don't worry, that abomination does not last. The first costume she tries on is this sort of medieval Swedish peasant dress, and I really did think red would pop against the turquoise background. <sighs> I wasn't wrong, but lord, I wasn't right. My own approach to fashion is erratic. I recently reorganized my clothes in a way that would probably upset Marie Kondo. I based it on the fact that I have three separate wardrobes, not large, but distinct from each other. My bright clothes, my earth tones, and my grayscale garments don't have a lot of outfit overlap, and I wake up every day knowing which color family mood I'm in. It was a chore to hunt for the right color when all my pants, for example, were in one drawer. Having resorted it so that my six drawers are separated by color saturation has been lovely. My closet, too, has three small sections now, and I love it. I recommend this sorting style to other people who may, like me, have loved the life-changing magic of tidying up, but got frustrated by the injunction to hang your clothes from lightest color to darkest color because when you have a light sage green shirt and then a bright red dress and then a dark avocado sweater, it looks crap. At this point, we're moving towards a more butch wombat goddess, and I, for one, am okay with this. The big challenge was to make her not look like a teddy bear, you know? Particularly for those in the audience who are less familiar with marsupials in general. Cartoon wombats have really big noses, but I wasn't willing to go the caricature route. I suck at caricatures. Cartooning in general isn't my thing, but I admire those who do it. At least one of my buddies from art school is a legit career animator, and I love seeing his stuff on Instagram. Recently, he got to work on Spies in Disguise, and I was like, Yay, Aaron! You rock so much! Back in the day, we did a group project together, and I know YouTubers are supposed to bitch about how useless their school project groups were because negativity is entertaining, but honestly, Aaron carried that thing. It was a sock puppet music video. I worked hard on the puppets. I helped with the performance. Aaron and the other guy, mostly Aaron, did everything else. I'd dearly love to see that again. My other Aaron story is just that when Morgan was a toddler, he'd talk to her in sound effects. They would have entire conversations in clicks and beeps and whistles, and it was so cute. Morgan didn't start speaking English until she was three and a half, but because of Aaron, she was fluent in Foley. You should totally check out his work. It's so lively and wonderful. I'll link it in the description. I'm still watching Resident Alien for those at home keeping track. It has nearly lost me more than once because cringe humor is my least favorite kind. And I'm incensed that the one plot thread I was really interested in is the one they've put a pin in. I'm like, screw the feud with the kid. Forget the dead man in the freezer. Who poisoned the doctor? 
Where is my extraterrestrial crime procedural? Go, go. <laughs> also, it's a bit of a nitpick, but I spotted ferns in the background. Pro tip for anyone making any piece of cinema set in Colorado. We have no ferns. None. Anywhere. Especially in the mountains. Drags me right out of the story, does that? It's why I never got past episode two of Supernatural. That and the fact that they had cell service inside of a mine. <laughs> I can't even call home when I'm camping. <sighs> I miss camping. My sister and I were chatting about favorite 80s movies a while back, and I had a brain fart at the time, but later I was like, Willow! Willow is my favorite movie of all time. How could I forget Willow? I love the characters, the story, the scenery. The music? I love Willow and Kaya's relationship. I love Billy Barty as the High Aldwin. I love how Burglecut represents small, petty evil, while Bavmorda is the world domination style evil. I love the Brownies, whose friendship is a constant, and Eric and Mad Mardigan, whose friendship has that tragic but beautiful arc. Get me out of here, Eric. Give me a sword. I'll win this war for you. Eric. I love I love the little old lady no holds barred fight scene. I love Val Kilmer in drag on a wagon fighting wicked henchmen. I even love the terrible Harryhausen monsters. If you go to rewatch it at some point, by the way, here's a thing I learned that makes it even better. Sorcia's father was the king of Tirislene. Really. There was a deleted scene where she sees him encased in glass and realizes that her mother is a lying psycho. That's the main reason she changes sides. Not just because Matt Mardigan is hot. Because that is not enough. Or is it? Here we have leather armor with fish scale details, and I keep trying to find a painting shortcut that will do the job because I didn't want to paint every individual scale, but in the end, I have to. It looks so nice, I don't mind anymore. Her color palette suits her better now, too. Granted, it's not as high contrast as the red was, but on the other hand, she doesn't look like Winnie the Pooh now, so that's good. I like her eyes. Eyes can be hard when they're meant to be animal and human at the same time. I've always been obsessed with eyes. As a teenager, I usually had a magazine subscription. Disney Adventures first, and then Seventeen, then Rolling Stone. And every month I'd go through after reading it and cut rectangles around all the eyes that I liked and glue them to the back of my bedroom door. Saying it makes it sound like I was a super creepy and unsettling young human, but really, I was just an artist. I would gaze at all my eyes and wonder how so much expression and emotion was being conveyed and how to cram that into my own pictures. The front of that door was covered in Sharpie quotes, and I painted the panels bright colors, and when we moved to Paonia, my parents let me bring my door along and hang it in my new doorway. It never fit right, but I loved having that piece of the old homestead. Speaking of homesteading, I love these wrapped leather britches on Vanadium. Also, she's got not work details for the same reason Scandium does. It's a cultural reference. We moved a lot during my childhood, and as a result, I get more attached to things than is probably normal. Things are what create continuity when you're moving all the time. This background needed more depth. Hmm. What's your attitude towards your stuff? Leave a comment and let me know. Some people are more like Auntie Mame. Easy come, easy go. But to be fair, she had Beekman Place for all those years, so stability wasn't really an issue. I made my kids watch that movie with me recently, and I love it so much, and now I really want a remake. It was supposed to be set in the 20s, but it was made in the 50s, and whoa, Melly, it shows. Also, the cinematography is kind of crap. There's plenty of scope for real camera work in that crazy fox hunt, or her travels with Bo. Make it happen, Hollywood. But a remake of the original, mind, not the musical. I don't give a rat's ass about the musical. Rosalind Russell is the only vintage mame for me. We're on the home stretch here, and I'm so happy you came along. Let me know if I achieved a convincing wombat who conveys her ties to Freya while modeling a sense of strength. Oh, I forgot to mention that the clasp on her little pouch is the rune for strength. 
Anyway, until next time, take care, keep warm, watch Willow or Auntie Mame, eat your veggies, and stay healthy. Things, things that would be a little bit irritating are just out of proportion and infuriating, like the, the kids wanted buttered toast, and I finished the toast and then went to get the butter out, which I put in the dish yesterday, fresh butter, and it was empty. No one had freshened up the butter, and I'm like, ah, I kill you all! <laughs> exactly! My, the part of my brain that's sane is like, yeah, I'm not... Don't make any major decisions today, woman. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like, you, you, look, you look up, you do an image search for any kind of female armor, and what they leave bare is the midriff and the thighs. And I'm the first to admit that that's fucking sexy, but it's the stupidest thing ever. Really? Leave your femoral artery out there? Well, but he's making that armor as a functional thing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they cover the damn femoral! Why isn't, why isn't practicality sexy? <laughs> it is, for some people. <laughs> Glad you're not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be so screwed.